Hello, this is the Engineering Design Process video presentation by our team, Microwaves. Our project is to design a powerful prototype oscillating water column, which can rapidly inflate a balloon, demonstrating the potential of wave energy for investors in the New South Wales government. Our team includes Jasmine, who will discuss the importance of the problem definition design phase, Fraser, who will justify our own problem statement, Rika, who will discuss the importance of concept generation, Zach, who will outline our concept generation phase, and finally me, who will outline the next steps in our design process. Hi, my name is Jasmine and I'm here to talk about the importance of the problem definition design phase. A problem definition aims to help guide us as we progress through the design process. As the team goes through trial and error in redefining the problem, our understanding of the problem and its possible solutions deepen. Each of the steps in the problem definition design process help to maintain an open mind towards various possible solutions while getting a deeper understanding of the brief and its criteria. Steps which require collaboration with the team help all members present their own interpretations of the problem, while also gaining insight into the views of the other members. This allows them to engage critically with each other's statements, prompting questions such as, what is most effective about this statement, and how could it be improved? These questions help in later stages of the design, as they help us to ensure that all criteria of the brief have been met. If teams are unable to collaborate with each other or follow the steps to design the problem definition, ineffective or undeveloped statements are produced. These are convoluted and could lead to forming solutions to the wrong problem or developing an ineffective definition that does not meet the design brief. Problem statements are important to the design process as they enhance team cohesiveness by getting everyone on the same page in regards to the problem itself and the team's direction on how the brief will be tackled. It also enhances the quality of the solution by going through steps that eliminate unnecessary constraints and ambiguity, while also taking into consideration all aspects and possible solutions to the brief. Hi, I'm Fraser and I'm going to be justifying a problem statement. So firstly, our team followed the facilitation guide for problem statements and completed background reading from the textbook. We thoroughly analysed the project brief to construct a list of metrics, objectives and constraints which can be seen on the following slides. So here are our objectives, our metrics, and our constraints. We then drew from these three categories and used the needs identification method, the who, what, where, why, when, to ensure a problem statement covered all aspects of the problem. Finally, we refined a problem statement to make it as concise as possible. I'll now cover the dis different aspects of a problem statement. First off, we have who, which is UNSW Engineering, the New South Wales Government. This gives background and context to the problem. What, which is an oscillating water column, essential to be included as only type of possible solution to the problem. Where, which is the wave tank of said dimensions, the project fitting within this wave tank is crucial to be an effective solution to the problem, so it must be included. When is week 10 of term, roughly the 18th of April, essential to meet deadline, must be included in problem statement as could potentially alter the level of complexity you go into the design, given how long you've got to complete it. Why, which is to demonstrate potential wave energy to see if it would be viable on an industrial scale to power a Sydney desalination plant. This gives context and purpose to the problem. And finally, our objectives, which are what are the goals for the problem, gives project direction and is essential to include. As we can see from the highlighting on those past slides, there are no ambiguous sections. Every part of the problem statement has to do with defining the problem 
keeping our problem statement accurate and precise. Hello, my name is Rika and I'm going to talk about the importance of concept generation. After the problem has been established, the EDP shifts to the conceptual design phase. It has been emphasized that this stage is essential for the emergence of creative ideas, as it prompts the formation of different solutions to a single problem. In addition, through integrating individual creativity in a collaborative environment, there is further diversification of the set of solutions formed. This is because ideas from different perspectives are combined to create a diverse pool of potential designs. The Journal of Engineering Education explains that through considering this wide range of ideas, we are more likely to encounter innovative solutions. Lastly, this stage serves as a foundation for the entire design process. The designs formed during this stage will serve as a baseline for the direction of the project, as it serves as a reference for product research, testing, experimentation, etc. Though revisions and adjustments are likely, the ideas formed during this stage will serve as a reference for the entire EDP. In order to expand the range of possible designs considered, our group utilized various concept generation techniques. These included crazy eights, a morph chart, and brainstorming ideas. Initially, we used the crazy eights technique, featuring each group member spending five minutes drawing eight rough sketches of possible designs to generate a broad range of ideas quickly. The morph chart lists the components and principal functions which our design must fulfill and contain. This process allowed the group to concentrate specifically on sections of the design and hence convey ideas in a structured form. Finally, brainstorming brought together the ideas of all group members collectively, allowing more organized designs to be formed by sharing insights and adding to other concepts. We were able to come up with a series of possible designs after discussing the concept generation techniques completed previously. Our first possible design is an angled or sloped water column. This features an angled backing which allows for a smooth transition of energy up the column and reduces the effect of gravity on the water's motion. Our second possible design is a fishhook shaped water column. This design features the water moving vertically which increases the air pressure in the chamber and the fluctuations of this air. Our third possible design is a suspended vertical water column. This design is able to intake water from waves in both directions and features an inclined plane further along which reflects waves and causes disturbance. The column itself will be placed at a point of wave superposition to maximize the wave energy intake. Our final possible design is a J-shaped vertical column. This design features maximization of the direct transfer of wave energy upward with a wide horizontal intake and a small amount of resistance caused by horizontal surfaces. Naturally, our next step is to evaluate these concepts so that we can start building the best design. We will make this decision with consultation with our project mentors, basing our choice on the design constraints and objectives, including aesthetics, innovation, safety, peak airflow, and the limitations on time and resources. Once we have chosen design, we will move into the manufacturing and testing phase, where we will build a prototype, test it, modify it to achieve maximum airflow before presenting our design in week 10. Thank you for listening to our presentation.